all right so in this video i'm going to explain a brief about the cash flow statement in terms of i7 under a direct method so if you still remember or if you check on my previous videos you will find that i did the indirect method under cash flow statement in terms of i7 so now i want to show you how these two method differ so firstly what you have to know is that when we prepare indirect method we have to first construct the nodes of cash generated from operation however when we are dealing with a direct method we don't construct such node simply means that we have to calculate our cash from generated operation from cash received from suppliers then we subtract cash that we paid to our suppliers and employees that's how these two methods differ so let me show you using the same example that we used in the previous lesson all right so firstly you have to check the first part of cash flow statement under cash flow operation activities the format change why because cash generated from operation when we prepare indirect method we firstly constructed the notes however in this case we just said cash received from customers then we subtract cash paid from sup suppliers and employees then we get our cash generated operation simple as that so first step how are you going to get cash received from customer what is cash received from customer this is the actual amount of cash that we receive from our customers remember the revenue that we calculate on the income statement it has included the amount of debt the amount of credit the amount that we sell to our debtors into what into a credit however remember when we are dealing with the cash flow statement we are only looking for cash item which means that in order for us to get the amount that paid in terms of cash we have to construct a t format of trade receivable in order for us to get the balancing figure of bank simple guys all right so this format stay constant if you are using a t account what is debited is always debited what is credited is always credited simple as that all right so first we must have opening balance on our debit side because remember trade receivable is dealing with what with an asset is an asset all right so debit balance of opening is going to increase our receivable revenue is going to increase our receivable but when customer pay we have to do what to credit because um, the debt is going to be reduced simple as that if we have impairment credit loss of course is going to reduce what the trade receivable okay then our closing balance it will come on the credit side all right firstly let's check the 30000 of opening and 4000 on of closing how did we get this to amount from income from our balance sheet let's go back to our balance sheet trade receivable 30000 in 2021 and 4000 in 2022 which means those one is copy and paste simple as that then what about the revenue 800000 from income statement you just take it and write it as it is okay so what about in payment credit loss this one you're going to get it on your income statement under expense 45,000 is there yes then you record it as it is then the balance of the bank is the actual amount that we are looking for for cash receipt from customer which you are going to get it as a what as a balancing figure you simply have to get total on the debit side then it will be 830 then you subtract 40,000 and 45,000 then you will get 745 
thousand. Then you record it on your cash flow seven hundred and forty-five thousand under cash receipt from customers. Simple as that. All right. So if you don't want to use the T account, you have an option where you can just calculate the balances as it is. How are you going to do that? All right. Very simple. Firstly. You have to add everything on the debit side. The balance at the opening, you have to add it. You add the revenue, then you list the impairment credit loss. Then after that, you have to also list the closing balance. Then you will get the same amount of 745,000. Simple as that. All right, now let's go to how do you get the amount of cash paid to suppliers and employees. All right, firstly, you have to construct inventory account. Why? Because we have to get the amount of inventory that has been purchased during the year. So that when we go to trade payable account, we're gonna put that amount, then we get the balance in a figure of a what? Of a bank. Simple. All right, balance at the beginning, you copy it from the balance sheet, Balance at the end, you copy it from the balance sheet, 100,000 and 120,000. Let's go and check them under inventory, 100,000 and 120,000. There it is. You just copy them as it is. Then let's proceed. Then cost of sales, you just copy it as it is under income statement. All right, then you do the balancing figure, then you will get the amount of 370 as a balancing figure of trade payable. Then this amount, we are going with it on what? On trade payable. We are going to credit it because it has increased our liability because trade and payable is liability and is increased on the credit side. All right, after that, the opening balance, of 20,000 and closing balance of 10,000. Why in this case of payable, we credit the opening balance? Because liability increase on the credit, which means the opening balance must go to credit side. Then the closing must come to debit side. Then we do a balancing figure. We will get the amount of 380. This one is cash paid to suppliers. What about to employees? We have to construct another account of operation distribution and admi administration expense then we will get our employees paid all right this one is very simple let's start what do you debit what do you credit remember we have prepaid expense and we also have a expense payable if we are talking about prepaid expense we are talking about an asset if we are talking about expense payable we are talking about liability. Simple means that the opening balance for prepaid expense, which is an asset, it must go to the debit side. The expense payable, which is liability, the opening balance must go to credit. Then the closing will go to debit. Simple as that. So these balances, you are going to get it on your balance sheet. Simple as that. After that, we have to take the other expenses that we spend on our income statement. Let's go and check them. 8,000 other expenses is there. Then we take it and we construct it on our T account. Then after that, we can do the balancing figure of a bank on the debit side. All right. Then after you have got this 29,000, you have to add it with what? With the amount that paid to suppliers. Then you will get the total cash paid to suppliers and employees. Very simple. Simple as that. So it doesn't matter whether you use direct method or indirect method. You are going to get the same amount of cash generated from operation. However, as a student, you have to know that for exam purpose, you are going to be asked any method of this one. They can either say 
prepare direct method or indirect method so if they said prepare direct method you have to prepare direct method in order for you not to be penalized you have to take note of that all right so, so the other things like uh, interest paid dividends paid income tax paid they remain the same you use the same procedure that i show you on the last video of indirect method then the other cash flow from investing the other cash flow from financing activity they also remain the same so the only different is when we calculate cash generated from operation the other thing it doesn't matter whether you're using direct or indirect you are going to use the same procedure so i hope this lesson was fruitful so good luck thank you